In this video, we're going to extend a previous uh, Flask WTF a Python example. So we had an app that was a very simple form previously with a text input and a submit button. And we're going to add to that a select field, what WTF calls a select field. And it will be correspond to a drop down select with options. Uh, over on the HTML side. So let's start. So uh, here we have our uh, Flask app, and it's we're going to have a uh, another Python file. So this is the Python. This is more the Flask file that's going to handle the, the routes. Um, then we're going to separate out another Python file, which is going to be more like, what are we going to have in our form? And we're adding a select. So we're going to say that we have a select field and here are the options that are available to the, to the user. We're going to have the HTML page with a form on it for the user to enter some data. Then we're going to have another HTML page, which is going to display the result, which we're going to say uh, sort of handles handles the uh, submission. And then we will ha have those two pages. We'll share a layout and some styling. Okay, um, I'm going to run this from the terminal here in Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to start uh, let me start by moving into my virtual environment. CD, change directory into the VENV. And then I want to activate. So I'm in a Windows machine and working with PowerShell. So that's script, activate. And we see the green popping up. OK, um, if I have not previously installed Flask WTF, I must, but I have. And then, so I'm skipping that step, but I'm going to, of, I have a number of apps uh, in this folder and I'm specifying that uh, the one app flask WTF select, the one with the select is the one I want. And I think I'm going to, uh, from the command line, allow debugging. So if I were to change anything on in the code, I can sort of refresh and see what's happening. And then finally, I'm going to uh, run, run this flask. OK, and here is the URL. We're setting up sort of a, a virtual web server here. And so here is the URL to serve this page that we're making. Here's the page. This is the page with the form. There's a place which we had previously for the user to enter uh, a name. So I'm choosing Fred. Then I have these drop down lists. So I'm going to choose uh, Python and I will choose blue. And I am going to enter. And there I'm spitting out the results. Fred, the language it was. PY for Python. Here is the uh, hex code for the color blue. And then here we are actually displaying the color blue. So we are going to see how to use it uh, as just text. The result of the select is just text, but also uh, sort of incorporated in the page in this case as like the background color of a div. OK, uh, let's just have a. Uh, um, I went. I just used my back arrow and went back to the simple form. And I just want to also have a peek at the page source. So this is the HTML. We didn't. We're not. We didn't explicitly write this HTML. We wrote some WTF and some Python and some Flask that then generated this page. So that's what we want to see. There is this uh, hidden input, which has this uh, token. Um, that's for some security stuff, probably not being really used in this example, but I just like to use it from the start. Um, here is a label for prompting the user for the name, and here's the input of the text type for the name to be entered. 
Here is a label for the programming languages. Here's the select. The select has an ID and name called language. So we will see that when we get to the WTF stuff that we named uh, something language and that becomes the name in the ID. So within, we are doing sort of server side stuff, but within a select, if you were to do anything on the client side, uh, you need to know you want it, the select to have an ID. And if you're doing anything on the server side, you want it to have a name. And so we will tend to work, uh, we're doing server side stuff in the name. If we wanted to add any uh, JavaScript, it's nice for the ID and the name to be the same. And then here are the options. Uh, the first option has a value of CPP. That's what we work with behind the scenes in a dropdown list. And then between the open option and the close option is what one, uh, what the user would see. So the user would see C++, but if we choose C++ and enter, then behind the scenes, we see the CPP. So that's what we were seeing there. And the same thing for the colors uh, between the open option and close option, we're seeing the color spelled out red, but the value what we use behind the scenes is the hex code. And um, finally, the submit button. Okay, so that's what it looks like. The first Python page is handling the routes, at least the first page I'm going to show you. So we're um, in 22, we're importing the generic Flask stuff that we're going to use. Flask in general, render template means we're using some uh, HTML pages, which we'll find in the templates folder. A URL, a four is sort of finds uh, for certain files, gets the URL for them or vice versa. Um, request is that we're working with a form and that is the, the request. Redirect is to take you from one route to another. So I'm going to have a default route and that's going to be redirected. Uh, name the app. Okay, we have a uh, some kind of security code. Um, here's the default route being redirected. We've seen that many times. This is not changing from our previous example. So all the changes will be in the simple form and in the HTML, but not here in the route handling stuff. The route, the route is the route. Uh, we care if it's submitted. If, if it's submitted, we take it to the handler. If it's not submitted, we take it to the form. But this part is the, the same as it was before. Okay, but what's changed is the form. So let's look at the form that is here. So now we are getting the generic uh, form stuff, Flask form. And as before, we had a string field and a submit field, and now we're adding a select field. Uh, we are sort of extending the Flask form, and I'm calling it simple form. Here's the name. That's what we had before. This is the label, and this is what we call any sort of effectively variables, I'll say, of what we get behind the scenes. Same thing for the submit button. I don't have to put over here in my class. This order doesn't matter. I don't have to put the submit at the end. I want to put it at the end over in the HTML for it to be a reasonable looking page. But over here, it doesn't matter. So I had, had previously had the string field and the submit field, and I'm just sort of adding to it. So the order seems a little funny here, but that doesn't matter. Here is my new thing, the select field. Here is effectively the label programming language. Let me go back. There is the label programming language. So this is the, the first argument in a select field is the label. And then there is a second argument in this case, which is choices, which in Python vocabulary is a list. The square bracket is a list. And then the parentheses are a tuple. So it is a list of tuples. And the tuples have uh, two parts. They have uh, 
in this first tuple, a CPP and C++. And then we saw that uh, one thing was what we use behind the scenes and one thing was what the user sees. So the first is the behind the scenes is the value. And the second thing is what the user sees. And that's between the open option and the close option. And here I'm just doing another example color, but it's the same format, select field, label, a set of choices. Okay. And again, it's a list of tuples, list of tuples. Okay. So we showed the routes, we showed the form, and now let's look at the uh, HTML form, the form with the select, here it is. And this won't look that much different other than the fact that it will now include the uh, uh, an indication for the, the language and the label. So it's extending the layout. It's got the title. It's got the header. It's got the content. It's got the form. It's got this CSRF token. Here we have the form uh, form name label and form name size. That's the same as it was before. And down at the bottom, here's the form submit. That's as it was before. And then in between there are the drop downs. I have a div which has the uh, form language label and form language. So this is what is prompting. So that's the, here's the label programming language. And then underneath it is the drop down. And I'm getting them on different lines because of my break tag here. So if I wanted them next to each other, just forget the break. And here is the same thing for the color. There's the color choice was the label, and then the drop down list is of the colors. Okay, uh, the submit button and end of the content. So then the handler with the select. It extends the layout just like the form did. I have a title, I have a header, I have my content. I'm saying hello, and there's the name. And then I'm just saying here is a Jinja comment. In case you wanted to make a Jinja comment. Um, sometimes you have longer blocks of Jinja with some sort of control structure. It's nice to know how to make a Jinja comment. Um, and then, but also there'll be a question of um, if it were an HTML comment, it would, could be seen in the, page source, but it was a Jinja comment, so it won't be seen here. Okay, so that was the name, and here is the uh, language. So the result is a language. Um, so the result got passed. Uh, so the HTML had the form, it got passed to the route, then it got passed from the route. Um, back over to the handler, and it was all based on the form. Here's the color. So here's me just displaying the color as text. But then down here, here's me using the color to affect something on the page to make, in this case, this blue. So it can be used just to be displayed as text, but it could be used as other ways. And then there was uh, the handle, or sorry, the shared layout, simple layout. There's my simple layout. There's my simple layout. I have the title, the header, the content, and I have a simple CSS. So I have a body, a form, a div, and a paragraph styling. I did a little styling to the input. I don't think I had that in the previous one. And then this is some specific styling for drop-down lists where you can get the uh, options to sort of change color uh, sort of alternately. So go back and if I drop down, if I use my drop-down list, it's white and gray and white and gray. And that is from this styling. Okay, so I think that's what I wanted to show you in this app. 
that I am adding in WTF the select. So there was a new uh, something over in the, the route really didn't change. The WTF part uh, did change because we had to bring in the select field with its label and its choices. We had to uh, display it on the page, but we didn't really have to do much. We had to add the fact that we are displaying them in the HTML, but it didn't really look any different. It was it was an addition, but it doesn't look any different whether it is a name input or a uh, drop down select input. Uh, they just get handled the same. Everything WTF handles those differences. And then in the handler, it wasn't really any different. Here, here I am getting the name. Here I am getting the language result. So it doesn't look any real difference over here in the H, uh, the handler HTML or in the form HTML. It doesn't really look different depending on the different like type of input, whether it's a select, whether it's a text field. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you in this one. Thank you for your attention.